start the recording now. Fantastic. Okay. So in this webinar, um, we will be, I will be speaking for around 40 minutes, which leaves time for questions and some discussion at the end. I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about the project that I'm working on specifically and about Wikimedia UK and Connected Heritage and um, what we're offering as a part of this project, which, run, which is running right now. Um, for those of you for, who are unfamiliar, I'm going to be talking a little bit about why um, Wikimedia projects can be a really great fit for culture and heritage organizations and what kind of unique things they can offer to you and to the rest of the world if you are to, um, to share using them. I'll be talking a little bit too about digital skills building and how we can support digital upskilling as well as some aspects of digital preservation for your collections if that's um, the relevant for you. And then at the end we'll have some time to talk about discussion and next steps. So it's time for me to hear from you, answer any questions you might have, and, and as well as talk about different ways that you might like to be involved and um, look ahead to next steps which might be possible. So just a few words about um, the project. Um, as I mentioned before, for those of you not familiar with Wikimedia UK, we're the national chapter of the global Wikimedia movement, and we work across the four nations of England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. The most recognizable project is Wikipedia, but there's many, many other wikis. Um, the goals of Wikimedia UK are to open up content and collections and remove barriers to knowledge. Um, we believe in the democratic create creation as well as consumption of knowledge. And um, also it's about sort of engaging with people, um, whether that's staff or volunteers or audiences. Um, and we believe that the open knowledge is a human right and that it brings social and economic value. Um, we strive to be free from systemic bias. We'll be talking a little bit more about how that plays out in reality um, and, and sort of some of the limitations of, of what we're doing, but the ways in which we're working to mitigate some of that systemic bias. Um, we do this really through partnership working, which is why you're here, um, because we cannot do this without you. Um, and so um, we, we aim to increase understanding through training as well as community development. Um, sometimes we do offer small grants and other project support. Um, the project that I'm working on um, is called Developing Open Knowledge Skills, Tools, and Communities of Practice for Sustainable Digital Preservation. Unsurprisingly, nobody ever says that. Um, we just call it Connected Heritage. And we're funded by the Heritage Lottery. Um, and this is a chance for us at Wikimedia UK to really reach out in a concerted way to heritage organizations. Our goals are to educate about open knowledge and open licensing um, and to develop digital skills for staff and volunteers years um, through inviting closer partnerships with heritage and cultural organizations um, to help you really shine a light on collections and share them for a worldwide audience. Um, we're particularly interested at the moment in working with folks um, around underrepresented heritage um, and, and so both marginalized um, editors and authors as well as topics. And so we'll be talking a lot more about, about that in, in, a, in a moment. Um, and so I'm a digital skills worker Comedian, I share the role with someone called Lucy Hinney. Um, and if you do um, get involved with our project, you'll hear from both of us equally. Our project lead is someone called Richard Novell. And for those of you who are, or are in the UK um, and have worked with Wikimedia before, um, you might have met Richard before in the past. And he's our project lead. Um, sorry about that. I don't know if you just, so I'm just trying to um, do a few different things at once. I'm not sure if, if that came across in the screen share. Um, and so the most pivotal part of our project is about partnership um, built with heritage organizations like our, yourselves. Um, partnership really can offer the following benefits. It, it, we can help you run outreach events um, around Wikimedia projects if you want to engage people with a collection or inviting a community to write about it on Wikipedia. That can be a really good way of doing that. Um, and our project can help you with the training and kind of technical aspects as well as a lot of the admin details because um, we're pretty excited experienced at running uh, trainings and events. Um, we can offer also practical help with sharing collections and knowledge um, through staff training. And um, 
as well as offer advice on how to engage with Wikimedia projects. Um, if you outline kind of your goals, um, we often have about 50 ideas of how that could work on Wiki. Um, and where there's there's great enthusiasm and potential, um, rather than doing a one-off event, we could maybe offer um, a few longer term projects and partnerships for 2022 and 23. Um, we'll be getting into more details and offering examples about how this might look a bit later in the presentation. And just to reiterate, in case it's not totally clear, all of these come with no cost, um, monetary cost for you as an organization. The costs would really be around time and capacity and sort of that mental engagement, which we're all kind of running a bit low on, I have a feeling, um, at this point of, in, of, of being a human in uh, 2022. Um, this is a bit tricky. So um, the cost, there's no monetary cost involved, but there is that time and engagement cost. And we recognize that can be a bit of a barrier. Um, but we can talk to you about ways in which, um, you know, to sort of think about it in terms of getting free skills training, perhaps for your um, communities or for your staff members, um, or, you know, sort of benefiting from our knowledge um, as well. But um, there, there's no monetary cost involved for you. At the same time, there's no sort of uh, um, not necessarily any grants available um, for for getting involved at this at this time. Um, though we're happy to sort of support grant applications, and we're doing that actually for a um, for a partner at the moment. Um, we're helping them to to reach out to our our particular funder. So um, there's a, there's just a few things to keep in mind. Um, partnership has a load of different benefits. Um, it can really help if you have collections, if you're coming from an archive or from a museum, um, visibility and findability are really improved when things are online and open. So just digitizing something and putting it in a, on a website or in a digital repository isn't really the end of the road. What happens next and how you reach out to folks is really crucial. Um, it can help with outreach if you have a certain collection or a certain area of knowledge that you'd like to reach out to people around. Um, you can lots of people can see your content if you put it online. Um, there's there's a big aspect of digital upskilling um, and digital skills development for staff and community involved in partnership, um, as well as digitization and digital preservation of online collections. This is particularly important for folks with smaller or medium sized organizations without. Out, um, perhaps technical, you know, all the technical bells and whistles, um, servers, etc. Um, our Wikimedia endowment does exist to preserve and provide continuous access to digital objects into the future. And, and we can advise as well on things like metadata um, in order to make sure that things are properly tagged and described, which can help with digital preservation as well. Um, and Anywhere where you'd like to sort of move towards a quality of representation or telling more stories, um, that can be a great area to sort of um, move into with, with partnership with Wikimedia UK. And oddly enough, even though it's a really old digital place on the internet, um, it's, we have just celebrated our, our 20th um, anniversary at, at Wikimedia, um, it still has a, as a sort of a... a um, an air of newness or an air of excitement around being involved with Wikimedia. Um, and so it sort of has a modern or innovative or user-friendly nature. Um, and, and staff, and especially internally or you know, interns can be really excited about working on Wikimedia. If you were to become a partner, you would be in good um, in good in, in good company. Um, I've popped a couple of logos on the screen of folks that we are working with um, at the moment. And so we have um, the Only Quakers, which is a small Quaker organization on the border of Wales. Um, we have the Workers Education Association. We're running an, an edit-a-thon for them next week. Um, the Mixed Museum is a digital heritage museum, um, di digital museum, which um, in which exists to, to highlight the history of racial mixing in Britain. Um, and we are doing a lot of work with the Shamian and you'll hear about that a little bit more in, in, the, in the presentation. And we've also run a, um, a Wikithon for Rather Was Together, which is a local history group, um, also in Herefordshire. And we have a couple of other um, partners as well. Um, and so um, why, 
and so sort of when when we're thinking again about partnering what would it really why why would you do this why wiki what would it achieve for you um one of the quotes from uh, mahendra mahi who was the former head of um the british library labs um said about being involved with the wikimedia in residence project in 2017 wikipedia is where the light is so it makes sense to put your collections there. Um, so a core Wikimedia value is to promote the free creation and consumption of knowledge. And it's likely that a lot of you will, um, you know, coming from museum and library archival background, um, this is probably one of your core values as well. Um, and we do think that's just really a socially, economically and democratically valuable thing to do. Um, making your collections a part of open knowledge involves two main parts. It's getting images, data, and knowledge in your area of expertise into wiki projects, and sharing in that non-commercial way that allows attribution to your institution or organization, but that allows reuse and engagement from a wider public. Um, so as this quote really demonstrates, if you want your collections to be seen, it's a great place to put them. Um, when we think about the projects that you might like to be involved in, um, the two main ones that I think will be of interest to us in Connected Heritage are the first one of those is called Wikimedia Commons. Um, if you're not familiar with this one, this is the wiki site where all images which are which you see on Wikipedia are uploaded and hosted. Um, each image can be described by metadata, um, which just describes more information about the image, like who created the image, when and where, its context, its content, its format, attribution, links back to your organization. Um, not everyone in the room is going to be really excited about metadata, um, but that folks maybe in libraries, archives, curators might find that useful, especially where you might have existing catalog information, which can be mapped into Wikimedia Commons for kind of mass uploads. Um, images from Wikimedia Commons are really easily searchable, and they can be really easily embedded into Wikipedia and sister wiki sites. Um, and competitions are frequently run. Um, for example, Wiki Loves Earth or Wiki Loves Monuments as sort of content drives for getting information into Wikimedia Commons and having kind of a photographic competition um, in, in a local area can be a great way of community engagement. Um, this is something that we're considering doing. Actually, I think, Jane, yeah, you're here. Um, and while that we're considering, um, it's a different Jane actually of doing down in Cornwall with a um, with the Victorian clay works um, is having a photo competition with volunteers to um, take pictures of the clay works and um, upload those to Wikimedia Commons. But this is a um, an, an example of the a finalist in Wiki Loves Earth 2021, um, which is a photo contest which is actually running now um, of a lovely brown hair. Um, and so anything which is uploaded to Wikimedia Commons is reusable um, and is openly licensed. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a second as well. Um, the second um, project, which is probably the best known of them all, Wikipedia, um, it has extraordinary reach. Um, it's read 22 billion times a month. It powers our smart speakers um, like Google search or um, artificial intelligence, um, Google, you know, Siri and Alexa. Um, and it really, you can see that the usage of Wikipedia really mirrors the news. So when folks really need to educate themselves about something um, or look at topics in the news or understand what's going on in the world, they turn to Wikipedia as a source. There's more than 300 different language Wikipedias of which English is the most dominant. And we'll be talking about that as well. So when you think about contributing, it could be either something text-based or it could be something image-based or um, multimedia, um, sound and video are also okay to upload to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and so it just would depend on the nature of what you might like to do and what would be most exciting to, to, to you to be working on. Um, and as you think about your collections or the knowledge your organization's people have, I think it's good to think about where there are certain ones that are calling out for more sharing. Um, there's a lot of buzz in uh, both education and galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, or GLAMs, around this idea of co-creation. Um, but I think it's anywhere where we'd like to move from kind of that static guardian model of curating or holding um, or, or being a gatekeeper of to being really a distributor of um, where you'd like to see more access engagement or a more dynamic model, um, anything around co-creation. 
So anywhere you'd like to improve access or educate and engage the public or add just some social value from your collect to your collections. Um, some people's thoughts might be turning in sort of a panicked way around um, ideas around copyright and licensing. Um, and so if this, this might be more relevant to those of you with larger archival or, um, you know, sort of museum collections, um, some collections obviously lend themselves better to Wikimedia than others. Um, and But anything that is put on Wikimedia or Wikipedia needs to be um, in the public domain or freely licensed. Um, and so not every collection will be suitable and we can advise you on how that might work. Um, you would need to use one, one of the open licenses, which is in, in this screenshot. Um, and I, it's also a point to kind of reiterate, we're not looking to, to take content or, or you know, take it away, um, but rather to make sure that it's seen and shared widely. Um, and, and so when it is shared, it is possible for it to be reused, including for commercial use, which can give folks a lot of pause. Um, and so again, we recognize it's not suitable for every single one, but often there are ones um, that can really benefit from being shared more widely. Um, sometimes open licenses are stipulated by funders like the Heritage Lottery Fund um, as of September 20 2020. And so it can be a really exciting way of, of looking at sort of um, impact as a measurement of value. Um, grant funding is often related to sort of reach, impact, and engagement, and, uh, you know, i.e. clicks. Um, even more so, this can generate even more funding than something like licensing can um, for some of your older images. So it's just worth bearing in mind, and it's um, quite a can of worms. So I won't dwell on it too much today, but again, just bear in mind, um, this is something that Lucy and Richard and I can, um, can advise upon. Um, an example of, of this kind of trade off between licensing and impact um, is, an, is, is comes to us from the National Museums of Scotland who released a very small um, collection of about 30 images and they created a new Wikipedia article around their Lewis Chessmen. Um, and so this was all uploads done by museum staff um, and they're seeing about 31,000 um, views just for this one image alone. Um, and so they've had, and this is actually a bit outdated now, they've had over a million views across those 30 images in nine months. Um, and this was a project that was really well received by the museum. Um, we set up monitoring for them where they can check on their own. And we'll be showing you the tool a little bit later on of how we can help you monitor those. Um, but these sort of, it's, it's worth thinking about, it doesn't need to be absolutely everything in your collection. It can be really a small um, managed upload um, and partnered with internal discussion and staff advocacy, which we can also advise upon because sometimes um, you're just one person and maybe you're managing a team who might be a bit reluctant. Um, sometimes you're just one person and you have a manager who's a bit reluctant and we can all help um, with that kind of advocacy work as well. Um, and so it's, it's led to a couple of different um, uploads as well um, after after these Lewis Chessmen, but I absolutely love this image. I'm not sure how big it comes across on your screen, but it's absolutely beautiful. And it's a really great e example of how a small um, release of images tied to a Wikipedia page can have a huge impact. Um, and so just as, as well, some folks might be, have heard of, of uh, something called conflict of interest. Um, around around um, Wikipedia so some we there is um, it's worth saying that Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons are not public relations or marketing tools they don't really stand in for being a web page and it's really frowned upon in wiki um, in the wiki world to edit any pages um, for for your employer or people who you know for yourself or for family members or loved ones um, and so that is frowned upon and yet and shouldn't let that stop you 
um, from sharing your institution's collections and expertise. Um, and so this one way of, of mitigating this is having a user page statement, which states really clearly um, where you work and what you are doing. Um, and so that it doesn't, um, it, it, it sort of helps mitigate some of that conflict of interest. And we can help with kind of more complex queries because this is, um, this is can be kind of a tricky area, but it should be as you think about where and how you might like to be involved. Sometimes we think like, oh, well, my institution's um, web page, you know, Wikipedia page is completely out of date. Um, it's not always the best place to jump in um, as sometimes the, that conflict of interest can get you in a bit of a sticky situation. Um, but um, again, it's, um, it's, it's something that we can advise on and there's lots of help available for you if you are feeling a bit nervous about that kind of thing. And so um, I'm now going to move into um, talking a little bit about why um, we need you after talking about um, why you might need us um, and what this project is doing to address some of the, um, the content gaps, we call them, and skills gaps in our glam and heritage sector. Um, Wikipedia of all the Wikimedia projects really reflects the world around us in good ways and bad. Um, it can reinforce and reproduce power and privilege and knowledge hierarchies in all of their familiar forms. And though we do strive for neutrality with the project, it's, it's not neutral. Um, and that's because who edits and what they choose to focus on, it really matters. Um, and as you can see from some of the bullet points on the slide, um, generally, not not universally, but generally, the typical Wikipedia editor is a white, educated man from the global north. And naturally, the projects tend to reflect the interests and knowledges that people with those identities bring. Um, and so, though it strives to be an encyclopedia of human knowledge, there's many knowledge, there's lots of knowledge and ways of knowing that's currently left out. And that impacts on what ends up being on the site. Um, and so, again, we do see this play out in things like um, less than 20% of biographies are about women on English language Wikipedia. I do have to say, uh, for those of you who are coming to us from Wales, um, that Welsh Wikipedia has um, gender parity on in their biographies. And, and that's a um, really good example of how concerted effort on a smaller Wikipedia can pay off in, um, in, in gender parity. Um, we do see even fewer trans or gender non-conforming representations on Wikipedia. Um, and also that um, though it's difficult to quantify um, in the same way that um, we can with, with kind of male and female um, biographies, racial bias, persists and the knowledge is very Western centric, particularly on our English language Wikipedia, again, the most dominant and well used of all of the um, of, of the wikis. And so this project wants to work actively to make that better um, by training and empowering new authors and gathering data images and knowledge around uh, underrepresented subjects. So you may find that actually, um, you know, since we are in the global north and, um, you know, I, I, I identify as a white woman as well, um, you know, that, that this is a I'm not exactly an underrepresented voice necessarily on Wikipedia myself, but that I can um, work to improve perhaps some language or um, subject representation in different areas that are currently underrepresented or marginalized on Wikipedia or in Wikimedia Commons. Um, and so just as an example of that racial and cultural bias, it's really difficult to quantify, but this is a useful example um, from the Wikimedian Dr. Martin Poulter, who's been working with artist and scholar Waqas Ahmed um, at the Khalili Collections, investigating Wikipedia's perspective on the visual arts. And so on the English language version of Wikipedia, Mar um, Dr. Poulter and, Wa and, and Mr. Ahmed discovered that there's kind of these definitive lists of sculptors, painters, and visual artists, which turn out to be 99%, 75%, and 80% Western European, respectively. Um, this is just not a true reflection of artistic contribution around the world. And so I'm just going to drop the um, this into the, the chat, a link to that work, um, if you just bear with me. Okay. 
Okay. Normally my colleague Lucy and I do this webinar together and she's dropping links all the time into the chat. Um, and so I uh, just a bit slower <laughs> um, than when, when she's not here. Um, but it looks so then you've got that link there just in case you wanted to follow this up. I will be sending around the slides afterwards if you'd like to follow up on any of these links or share them more widely with other folks in your organization. Um, I know that I'm coming out here with a lot of information and, and facts and figures. And so you will be able to follow those up in a little bit as well. Um, and so this we have one of our interns, um, Zaid was working with us um, at the Mixed Museum, one of our partners. And I think his quote is really lovely. And he's asking, what if the Wikipedia page for your desired topic is skeletal or incomplete or worse still? What if that Wikipedia page doesn't even exist? Um, so this is one of those, those places where um, the the impact of the world's you know most visited information source what if that information just doesn't exist or it's skeletal or it's wrong um, and so this is where you might know um, this is where you come in because we know your organizations are filled with great people and we want to offer this opportunity to them and to you specifically around underrepresented heritage or and just around the knowledge and the collections that you might hold in your small or medium sized organization, because um, we believe that inviting training empowering people um, to share knowledge and collection can really help improve the the the, the, the Wikimedia projects, because who edits and what they choose to focus on, that really matters. Um, and so this can be a really great chance for folks to, um, to look at changing the world in a democratic way. So <laughs> that sounds a bit grand, but it can be a chance to stop just being irritated by something being wrong or missing or incomplete, as I'd quote, um, demonstrates, but a, a chance to really start shaping the narrative um, in an area that's currently either wrong or perhaps a little bit limited. Um, it can also be a chance to kind of har harness existing skills and interests within your organization. Um, maybe people have a lot of knowledge that isn't currently being shared in a meaningful way. Um, and this can be staff, volunteers, audiences, and trustees, etc. Um, anyone can edit, and this is a, so it's a great chance for the interested amateur, the, the learner, as well as the scholarly expert, for those of you maybe coming from an, a university or if you have links to a more um, scholarly or research community, everybody has something to add here. And we believe that kind of democratic approach really truly reflects the human experience and human knowledge. Um, it allows you to share the collections and data that you have online. And this is more important than ever as we've kind of moved into this kind of digital half space, haven't we? Um, probably, well, whatever stage we are in the pandemic, um, we're still finding ourselves often at a distance and that expecting um, we would be able to have a meaningful interaction online um, after what we've been through um, and realizing that we can feel close and have interesting experiences online that kind of um, allows this is a step into that space, um, particularly if you're thinking about having digital volunteering um, or digital digital um, online experiences or digital events. Um, it can also be a chance to kind of fill content gaps for active change. Um, again, not just feeling irritated by X being wrong or incomplete, but being able to fix it for yourself. And then more importantly, for those 22 billion monthly views on English language Wikipedia. Um, and so we think this, this helps us to um, stand a better chance of closing the gaps um, while at the same time offering digital skills and open licensing training that are really quite needed, um, we, we find in, in GLAM. Um, organizations. Um, and so again, another quote from this time, Shamian, the director at the Mixed Museum, um, she says, as after working with us for a couple of months now, she looks at Wikipedia differently. She knew there were gaps before, um, but now she looks at something as something that she can and actually should fix. Um, she feels a responsibility um, for making sure that, that areas where she knows there's something wrong, um, that she really should be fixing them. Um, and so how does this actually look? Um, something that, uh, so I just have a couple of examples of, of ways in which this 
might actually happen. Um, we run things called editathons or wikithons, um, where we would um, do training for a group of people, um, and they would learn how to use Wikipedia and then edit together on a specific topic. Um, in this case, so there's this is an example of an organization called the Black Lunch Table, and it's an organization of people rather than it's not based at an at, at a museum or at a um, at an institution but it's rather a collective of people who get together to focus on black artists lives and works and they hold events worldwide to train people up on how to edit and then they create articles together or improve articles or um, update articles or add images um, and so over the they've been running for now eight years and they have over 146 articles created um, and 20 million article views and over, almost 350 new editors have been trained. Um, and just as an example of what this might look like, um, this, this is a group of people sitting in a library all together with their laptops, um, and there would be a trainer there in person, um, and um, there would be resources. This is obviously, this is in the library um, in 2015. We can run these online as well. Um, but that, that, that we, we can have, um, we, we run events like this. Another way um, that you might think about um, partnering with us would be less an event oriented, but rather advising and advocating for you internally about how to do um, larger uploads of images that you might hold in your collection. So in this case, um, an organization called Code the City hosted a three months postgrad residency um, to get, they had these amazing kind of huge bound books of mug shots of quote unquote habitual criminals. Um, um, from the turn of the century. And there's lots of data around these mugshots um, that they wanted to get online and into something called Wikidata. And so they uploaded um, images in bulk with the um, attendant metadata and the sort of richer information that was in those historic registers or ledgers. And they ended up with an analysis of 278 records on um, Wikidata. And this is one example of what one of those pages looked like. And I find this, um, you know, it's sad, but also quite moving and that there are people represented in photographs um, who, who aren't necessarily always who we see in older historic photographs. Um, so um, the impoverished uh, working class, perhaps um, people who were criminalized at that time um, are then pictured in these, in these photographs with information about their names and where they lived and, and what their crime was. Um, and so I think it's a really interesting example of what you can do with Wikimedia and Wiki, um, Wikimedia Commons and with Wikidata. Um, so it's both events as well as, um, as potentially a mass upload like this. There's also, and so there's also worth thinking about as well, um, the kind of digital skills building that, um, that, that you might find, and this might, might speak to you in your organization. Um, there's a big element of digital upscaling in this project. And there's, I recognize that Heritage is a huge umbrella. There's many types of organizations in the room today. And you might not recognize all of these issues for all of your people. It may though be relevant for everybody. Um, but there was a, a report undertaken by um, the National Lottery Heritage Fund um, looking at digital skills in the heritage sector. Sector. And this, um, this report ran in, um, in 2021. And again, I'm just going to try and drop that link into the text for you, into the chat for you. Um, and they, and they discovered that, um, pardon, just copy and pasting. I can't do more than one thing at once. <laughs> they discovered um, that there was a digital skills gap in the recruitment poll when they talked to people who actually in the recruitment pool, sorry, when they when they talked to people who actually do the hiring in the organizations. Um, and so they found that um, they struggled to recruit people with digital relevant digital skills, particularly in those smaller organizations. They also found on the flip side that there was a lot of untapped talent and kind of hidden collections within the organization. So folks really felt as though they had a lot to add, a lot of um, skill and, and knowledge and ability, but they didn't didn't really have a way to contribute that 
digitally. Um, and there's a lot of lack of clarity around what's expected and what people should know how to do digitally. Um, and they also express that collections may be digitized, but they're not really necessarily shared effectively. Um, people also reported to the National Lottery Heritage Fund that they um, they felt there was a lack of time to practice digital skills and lack of support from people working in similar roles or with similar objectives and, and challenges. Um, and so they wanted sort of more support from specialists or also from peers. Um, they were kind of reluctant to engage with technology that didn't translate into supporting people in culture or didn't improve their ability to do their job. Um, and so that there was also kind of a lack of time and technical expertise to adequately digitize, describe and preserve archival and museum objects in that digital sphere. Um, particularly volunteers, but also some staff members expressed a lack of confidence with technology, but many respondents felt quite secure with digital. Um, and, and then just finally, um, many responded that they wanted more understanding around copyright and content creation and creating content and translating that meaningful cultural experience that we have with heritage organizations into a digital sphere. Um, and so how to do that was really something that people wanted to explore more or they wanted more support with. And so enter <laughs> Wikimedia. Um, so if improving um, digital skills or addressing any of the things on that prior slide as part of your current strategy, you might consider being involved with our project um, because it's a chance, it's a kind of a concrete or hands-on way to gain skills, but also to accomplish goals around sharing content and engaging worldwide audiences. Um, they're from novice to expert, um, there are many skills developed in wiki projects, um, digital skills, and so for every category on this slide, um, there are, there everybody can learn something new but in I've just I've listed kind of the, the at the basic end of the spectrum today um, what kinds of digital skills folks might develop if they were to come to an event with us or work with us to get more um, of the content uploaded online um, and so just from the you know the super obvious one computer and internet literacy when you're um, editing Wikipedia you are editing in a digital format and so it's about both understanding and uploading media as well as writing Writing, um, for a digital a digital space um, and it is a lot like writing at the at now it's a lot like writing an email or formatting a word document if people feel confident doing those things or know that they have done it in the past um, we're able to kind of take them to the next step and have them edit on live at Wikipedia. Um, there's skills around digital content creation. Um, so writing for the interested non-expert, this is a really it's a useful skill, especially if you have researchers or curators or um, scholars in your area. Um, being able to communicate that to somebody, to a lay person is a great skill. Likewise for student interns um, or students, if you did have students in your organization, um, learning to create and learning to write for an interested non expert and not an academic voice, but it, that that kind of neutral encyclopedic tone is a fantastic skill for them to be able to share on a, on a CV with a potential employer. It's a way of also learning how to share your expertise online. It's possible you have um, audiences or staff members who have a lot of expertise, but don't necessarily do a lot online. Um, this is a chance for them to take that to a wider audience. Um, and we also, there's in terms of content creation, either scanning or taking photographs, uploading those to Wikimedia Commons. Um, there's some great digital skills developed there as well. Um, a few, there also people will be forced to think about and contend with things like open licensing and reuse, um, reusing content ethically and legally, um, and sharing one's own creative outputs and understanding um, all of the different licenses that might apply to one's own creative outputs is a really important skill to learn as well. And then finally, um, I am a librarian, and so this last one really speaks to, to my um, interests, but understanding data and information literacy, um, opening collection description uh, um, and cataloging for the the open for sort of more open side rather than for closed library systems, um, working with large data sets as well. Um, but then also in the information literacy side, citing one's sources and that critical evaluation of information sources, synthesizing, and um, again, ethical and, and um, 
and in um, reusing sources with integrity and citation is um, really developed as well um, when we are looking at what types of skills are developed when we edit Wikimedia. Um, and again, it can sound really grand, but actually it is um, surprisingly easy to edit Wikipedia. So what I'm going to show you now is just a quick video clip of um, my colleague Lucy editing Wikipedia in, um, in real time. And so in this case, Lucy's logged into Wikipedia. Um, she's noticed an error. And so she's gone to the edit button. She's highlighted the error, deleted it. <laughs> she's going to publish the changes. And then she writes a short summary of what she has done and then publishes her changes. And lo, the, um, the error is fixed. And so it's amazing. It's that easy. It's um, both wonderful and terrifying, um, that easy to make changes on Wikipedia. Um, and so we can, in, in an editing event, we can take folks from not knowing anything about how to edit to doing small, simple edits, um, a lot like what Lucy's demonstrated in that quick video. Okay. Oh, bye, Barbara. Thank you for letting me know. Um, you're, I'll, you'll get an email with a follow up so you can have a look at the, um, at the slides afterwards. Um, and so um, well, just a few words on how we develop these skills. Um, we offer both, as I've mentioned before, editing events, expertise, as well as practical help. Um, editing events can um, be online, as in this example, um, where we train folks all in their own bedrooms or offices, um, or they can also be hybrid, um, where you can see in this case, um, Richard is here on the screen training um, the big people community in um, March. Um, to, actually, I've got the wrong date on there, 2022. Um, and so these are just, these are two um, edit-a-thons, which our um, which our project has run. Um, and so in an edit-a-thon or wiki-thon, this would be how to create an account, use a sandbox to have a play with formatting, create a user page, insert a citation, um, and make the first easy edits like adding citations or info boxes, images, um, or copy editing for grammar. This can be organized around a theme um, like Black History Month or um, Pride, but it also could be around climate change, um, citation, justice, feminism in art, um, or in these cases, or also there's women in classics, history of medicine, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that there's many different ways to organize those events. Um, we do try and make them fun <laughs> and participate tend to have a really positive reaction. Um, so we do try and make them approachable and, um, and, and to, to recognize that folks develop um, regardless of where they start from. Um, and so that everybody will come away from the day with something learned. Um, and it's also a way to move again from that passive information consumer to being an active um, information creator um, and, to, and contributor as well. Um, again, we also offer the expertise um, that could look like something, you know, how to organize an event um, or which collections might be relevant, um, which open license to use and which types of content can be reused. Um, it can be also advocacy and training within your organization, um, both online or in person um, and other as well as ways that you could um, assess the skills development or the digital reach of your collections. Um, and then the final kind of area um, as well of, of where you might um, in, be interested or, or find partnering useful would be in kind of practical help. Um, and so this could be uploading large data sets or sets of images and also assessing impact and engagement with what you upload. Um, so the, and you can watch this actually when I, well, if, if you're interested later, this is just a, a kind of brief video on how to upload using a tool called Patty Pan, um, a large set of images with, um, and, and, uh, yeah, with a spreadsheet. And then also also, um, there's the example of um, the metrics and impact tools, which can help you measure how many page views um, a certain set of images might have um, 
generated as well as um, you know sort of across it can be across all of the images which you upload and this is called the big llama tool which I like to call the bag llama but nobody else thinks that joke is funny I like to think about it as a llama um, but it's not it's a web page <laughs> and it's a tool for measuring uploads but it shows uh, as well the amazing reach that some of these um, images can can be so this is from the Wadston Manor in Buckinghamshire um, and you can see that their images are embedded across 101 different Wikipedia pages in in English language Wikipedia, as well as some other language Wikipedias. And the page views um, they're generating uh, over across a month would be about a half a million, um, a half a million views. Um, and I, I also just want to stress, it's not just about article creation. So often we think, okay, the, I'm going to edit Wikipedia, I'm going to write a Wikipedia page. But actually, that's a huge that's a huge project, almost like writing an essay or a dissertation um, at university. Um, and so there's a lot of smaller tasks which can be just as impactful. So there's ongoing work in curatorship around certain topics, um, improving articles, doing translations, if you have communities with languages other than English, um, changing hurtful or wrong or outdated language, um, doing copy editing for typos is a fantastic way to engage folks with those detail oriented skills um, or adding images or adding citations. So an example of a, um, two biography pages on in this case, um, one has an image um, for as uh, attached to the to the biography and the other one doesn't. We know that um, pages with images on them generate a lot more interest and engagement from from viewers. Um, and so just adding adding images to biography pages, sourcing those images, making sure they can be reused, uploading them to comments, embedding them in the page. That's a great task for a Wikithon. There's also an, um, an ongoing activity called One Lib, One Ref. Um, where li library workers around the world are trained in how to add citations to Wikipedia. And the goal is twice a year, every library worker around the world adds um, one citation to Wikipedia. Um, and so in 2020, um, there was over 18,000 citations across 60 different languages. So in terms of access to further information, high quality information, scholarly information, this is a great example of um, the types of activity that can be small and yet really impactful. And so um, just we're coming to the point at which I would love to hear from you, and I recognize um, that, that we're coming towards the end of our hour as well. But what I'd like to know, and I think Jane's already popped a great question in the chat, but what I'd love to know is um, from you, what types of, if you were to be involved, um, as you think about what you might like to um, you know, if, if you're thinking about what you might like to do in terms of what next steps, asking yourself questions around what collections or subjects you could highlight, anything that's small, out of copyright, relatively straightforward. Um, what types of strengths does your organization bring to Wikimedia projects in terms of, you know, it could be people, it could be um, digital know-how, it could be um, new communities, etc. cetera. Um, what staff or community you could get involved um, as well as what kinds of support you might need from us um, to take the next steps. And so um, again, just as, as you think about whether, you know, what's next steps to take, those are the questions I hope that you could run, run through your mind. Um, and just in terms of what you could do next, um, I'm gonna just skip over the next slide for a second. And just as this is often the first question that folks ask, um, we do have, um, if you did want to find out what an editing event might be like, um, we have an edit-a-thon event coming up on the 21st of July, um, as well as the 30th of September. These are kind of prototype events run by me and Lucy online um, where you could get trained and have fun um, and just see what one of these edit-a-thons might be like, as well as just learn um, yourself how to begin editing. Um, I'll be sending around an email with links to the slides and the recording, as well as case studies that we mentioned and online tutorials for getting started. If you're ready to sort of, you're, you're, you're psyched and you're ready to do it on your own, there's loads of tutorials um, for, for getting started yourself. Um, so I think, I'm not sure if that was a question or if um, 
somebody maybe accidentally okay. unmuted themselves. There's also it's possible to um, to sign up to our mailing list or make an appointment with um, me and Lucy via something called Calendly um, and to talk about your your organization um, if you would like. Um, oh gosh. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh. Um, yeah. did, you, did you have a question? <laughs> um, right, I've got my card. Let's see if we can get this to work. And so um, what I'm going to do now yeah. is actually um, stop the recording.